This lecture covers chapter 13 of Clear-Sighted Statistics, an introduction to null hypothesis significance tests. Karl Popper, the great 20th century philosopher of science, summarized the essence of null hypothesis significance testing when he wrote, it must be possible for an empirical scientific system to be refuted by experience. No hypothesis significance testing is about falsification, refutation, and nullification. Like mathematics, it does not prove propositions. This lecture has nine objectives. One, define null and alternate hypotheses. Two, define the significance level. Three, define type one or alpha errors. Four, Define type 2 or beta errors. 5. Define statistical power. 6. Describe the purpose of a decision rule. 7. Define the frequently misunderstood concept of p-values. 8. List the steps in null hypothesis significance testing. 9. Discuss the difference between statistical significance and practical significance. Let's turn to the origins of null hypothesis significance testing. In 1925, R.A. Fisher published the first edition of Statistical Methods for Research Workers. The 14th and final edition was published in 1970, eight years after Fisher's death. In this book, Fisher laid the foundations of what he called significance tests. Fisher's method had only one hypothesis. Today, null hypothesis significance testing has two hypotheses, thanks to Jersey Neyman and Egon Pearson. In 1928, Jersey Neyman and Egon Pearson, son of Carl Pearson, introduced hypothesis tests. Neyman and Pearson's goal was to correct what they saw as flaws in Fisher's approach. They added a second hypothesis called the alternate hypothesis. The alternate hypothesis typically states the research question. They added type 1 or alpha errors, which are false positives, and type 2 or beta errors, which are false negatives. Fisher and Neyman waged an acrimonious debate about the merits of their approaches until Fisher's death in 1962. Textbook authors combined Fisher's significance testing and Neyman Pearson's hypothesis testing into a unified approach. We will call this approach null hypothesis significance test. Not everyone agrees that this amalgam is unified. In his book, Understanding the New Statistics, Jeff Cumming wrote, it might be tempting to regard the mixture of the two approaches, Fisher and Neyman Pearson, as possibly combining the best of both worlds. But the two frameworks are based on incompatible conceptions of probability. The mixture is indeed incoherent, and so it is not surprising that misconceptions about null hypothesis significance tests are so widespread. What null hypothesis significance testing does? It uses sample data and probability theory to determine whether a proposition about population data should be rejected. It does not verify the null or alternate hypotheses. With null hypothesis significance test, there are only two possible decisions. One, fail to reject the null hypothesis. This means that there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Please note, we should not say we accept the null hypothesis. Two, the other decision is to reject the null hypothesis. This means that there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis when this happens, we have statistical significance. These two decisions are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. There are no other possible decisions. To repeat, rejecting the null hypothesis means the results have statistical significance. Statistical significance means that there is sufficient evidence that the results are too extreme to be due to sampling error. Failing to reject the null hypothesis means that there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. The results are mere sampling error or there is not an effect. 
Is Michelangelo's painting of God creating Adam a hypothesis? No, it is not a hypothesis because it is not subject to scientific falsification. A hypothesis is not a theory. What is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a preliminary proposition that provides an explanation of a phenomenon. A hypothesis can be tested, which means it can be refuted, falsified, or nullified. What is a theory? A theory is a unified explanation of a phenomenon. A theory was initially only a hypothesis, but it has withstood repeated attempts at falsification. Theories, however, can also be falsified. A paradigm shift is a scientific revolution that occurs when a theory is falsified. Let's turn to a non-mathematical null hypothesis significance test, a criminal trial. Trials and null hypothesis significance tests share a premise. With a trial, the defendant is assumed not guilty until the prosecution can convince the jury of the defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. With a hypothesis test, the null hypothesis is presumed an acceptable explanation until the data proves otherwise. The null hypothesis implies no difference or no effect. With parametric techniques, the null hypothesis always pertains to the population. Parametric techniques assume the data are normally distributed. Basically, the null hypothesis states that the sample statistic equals the population parameter. The null hypothesis contains an equal sign, less than or equal sign, or greater than or equal sign. With non-parametric techniques like chi-square, the null hypothesis states that the observed frequencies do not match or fit the expected frequencies. Non-parametric techniques do not assume the data are normally distributed. R.A. Fisher on the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is never proven or established, but it is possibly disproved in the course of experimentation. Every experiment may be said to exist only in order to give facts a chance of disproving the null hypothesis. Hypotheses and skepticism. The truth of any hypothesis is always subject to doubt. When the null hypothesis is not rejected, we never say it is proven. We say we fail to reject it, or we lack sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. In addition, when the null hypothesis is rejected, we never consider the alternate hypothesis true. The alternate hypothesis is the proposition the prosecutor hopes to demonstrate. The defendant is guilty. With a hypothesis test, the alternate hypothesis is the falsification or nullification of the null hypothesis. With parametric tests, the alternate hypothesis states the sample statistic is not equal to the population parameter. With chi-square tests, the alternate hypothesis states the observed frequencies do not fit the expected frequencies. The alternate hypothesis states the research question. It declares that a difference exists, or the difference between the sample statistic and the population parameter is too large to be explained by random sampling error. On the other hand, the null hypothesis means no difference or no effect. To repeat, the null and alternate hypotheses are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. They are, in essence, an either-or proposition. Jury trial verdicts are based on the reasonable doubt standard. Null hypothesis significant test decisions are based on the significance level, or alpha. The significance level is the inverse of the confidence level. 1 minus the confidence level equals the significance level. The significance level designates the rejection region or regions from the region where the null hypothesis is not rejected. The significance level, or alpha, is set at the start of the test. Both Fisher and Neyman Pearson frequently used a 5% significance level. The significance level is our tolerance of committing a type 1 error which is erroneously rejecting the null hypothesis.
A type 1 error, therefore, is a false positive. Here is a normal curve for a two-tailed z-test. The two rejection regions are the areas in red. They are defined by two critical values for z, negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. There is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis when the calculated z values of this test are less than negative 1.96 or greater than positive 1.96. With the null hypothesis significance test, there are two possible correct outcomes. One, reject the null hypothesis. Two, fail to reject the null hypothesis. But there are also two possible errors. One, false positive or type 1 or alpha error. This means that the null hypothesis was incorrectly rejected. Type 2, false negative or type 2 or beta error. This means that the test incorrectly failed to reject the null hypothesis. Correct decision 1 jury trial. An innocent man is declared not guilty. Correct decision 1 for a null hypothesis significance test. The null hypothesis is correctly not rejected. This means that any difference between the statistic and parameter is merely sampling error. Correct decision two for a jury trial, a guilty man is convicted. Correct decision two for a null hypothesis significance test, the null hypothesis is properly rejected. This means that there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis at the selected significance level. But there are also two types of errors. Type 1 error is a false positive. With a jury trial, an innocent man is convicted. With the null hypothesis significance test, the null hypothesis is wrongly rejected. The significance level sets the acceptable risk of a type 1 error. A type 2 error is a false negative. With a jury trial, a guilty man is acquitted. With a hypothesis test, a type 2 error is wrongfully failing to reject the null hypothesis. The 19th century Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard was not a statistician, yet he stated the essence of type 1 and type 2 errors when he wrote, one can be deceived in believing what is untrue, but on the other hand, one is also deceived in not believing what is true. What affects the probability of a type 1 error and the probability of a type 2 error? As the probability of a type 2 error goes up, the probability of a type 1 error goes down. When the variability of the data increases, the probability of a type 2 error goes up. When the sample size n goes up, the probability of a type 2 error goes down. Calculating type 1 and type 2 errors. The acceptable risk of a type 1 error is set when the significance level is chosen. The probability of a type 2 error is a calculation that will be explored. The acceptable risk of a type 2 error is also set at the early stage of the research, typically before the data are collected. The goal for many analysts, the probability of a type 1 error, less than or equal to 5%. Probability for a type 2 error, less than or equal to 20%. Type 1 errors are considered more serious than type 2 errors. Statistical power equals 1 minus the probability of a type 2 error. Statistical power is defined as the ability of a test to find an effect. By convention, most researchers seek to achieve 80% statistical power or the probability of a type 2 error of 20%. Low power tests are unreliable. They often miss an important effect or confuse sampling error for an effect. The problem with overpowered tests. Statistical significance is achieved, but the results lack practical significance because the effect is negligible. The big issue with statistical power is sample size. Sample size should be large enough to ensure sufficient power. Statistical power should be calculated a priori before the test. The achieved level of statistical power can be measured post hoc after the test, but many statisticians do not approve of this method. 
The a priori statistical power calculation is used to estimate the required sample size based on the researcher's tolerance for a type 1 error and a type 2 error, and the minimum effect size needed to achieve practical significance. Practical significance occurs when the test results have real-world importance. There are six steps in the null hypothesis significance test cycle. Step one is test setup. In this step, the research method is determined, as are the operational definitions. Operational definitions define how variables will be measured. The data collection process, surveys, experiments, databases, etc., is determined, and sampling methods will be decided. An a priori statistical power calculation will be conducted to determine the size of the sample. Then the data are collected. Step two, the researchers select the significance level. The significance level, or alpha, is the acceptable risk of committing a type 1 error. The significance level is typically chosen before the data are collected. It is typically set at 5%, but sometimes 1% or 10% is selected. The lower the significance level, the harder it is to reject the null hypothesis. The lower the significance level, the lower the statistical power. The null hypothesis is rejected when the probability of obtaining a test statistic is less than or equal to the significance level. As we shall soon see, this probability is called the p-value. The significance level and the critical value or values. The critical value or values mark the region where the null hypothesis is rejected. Critical values are based on the significance level and the type of test. Interpreting statistical significance. When the probability of a test statistic, the p-value, is less than or equal to the significance level, the results are statistically significant and the null hypothesis is rejected. Rejecting the null hypothesis means the results are unlikely due to random sampling error. Statistical significance is not the same thing as practical significance. Practical significance often but not always refers to the magnitude or size of the effect. Having statistical significance does not mean results have any real application, which is to say practical or clinical significance. With a large enough sample, all results have statistical significance, but may lack practical significance. Practical significance often depends on the size of the effect. But it is possible to fail to reject the null hypothesis and still have practical significance. Step 3. State the null and alternate hypotheses. The null hypothesis is the proposition researchers seek to nullify or refute. The null hypothesis means that there is no difference between the statistic and parameter or between the samples. Any difference is merely random sampling error, which is not a big deal. With Z and T tests, the null hypothesis takes one of three equal signs, equal to, less than or equal, or greater than or equal. The alternate hypothesis is the opposite of the null hypothesis. It frequently states the research question. The alternate hypothesis states that something important is happening. The statistic does not equal the parameter. The alternate hypothesis takes the mathematical sign that is the opposite of the one in the null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis has an equal sign, the alternate hypothesis will have an unequal sign. If the null hypothesis has a less than or equal sign, the alternate hypothesis will have a greater than sign. And if the null hypothesis has a greater than or equal sign, the alternate hypothesis will have a less than sign. Z and T tests are directional. They can be left tail, two tail, or right tail tests. The mathematical sign in the alternate hypothesis points to the appropriate tail or tails. F test and chi squared test, however, are always right tail tests. Step four is to compose the decision rule. Decision rules are written before the data are analyzed. 
They state the criterion for rejecting the null hypothesis. They never state whether the null hypothesis has been rejected, nor do they state when the null hypothesis is not rejected. Decision rules are based on the critical value or values or the p-value. Today, researchers rarely state the decision rule, but they will report the achieved p-value. Writing the decision rule using the critical value or values is helpful for people learning statistics because doing so will focus your attention on the distribution curve's rejection region or regions. A decision rule should be a short declarative sentence. They start with the phrase, reject the null hypothesis if, then the test statistic, z, t, f, or chi-square is named and then the rejection region is mentioned. If your decision rule is longer than a short sentence, it is too long. Here are the decision rules for left tail and right tail tests using Z and T at a 5% significance level. The decision rule for a left tail T test with 20 degrees of freedom is reject the null hypothesis if T is less than negative 1.725. The decision rule for a right tail Z test, reject the null hypothesis if Z is greater than 1.65. Here are the decision rules for two tail tests using Z and T at a 5% significance level. For a two tail T test with 20 degrees of freedom, reject the null hypothesis if T is less than negative 2.086 or greater than positive 2.086. For a two-tail z-test, reject the null hypothesis if z is less than negative 1.96 or greater than positive 1.96. Here are the critical values for left-tailed, two-tailed, and right-tailed tests for z at 1%, 5%, and 10% significance levels. The critical values in the parentheses were found using Microsoft Excel. These critical values are more precise than those found on the area under the curve table. Decisions about the null hypothesis can be made using p-values. The null hypothesis is rejected when the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level. In fact, most researchers make their decisions regarding the null hypothesis on p-values. Step 5. Calculate the value of the test statistic, p-value, and effect size. Calculating the test statistic the formulas for the test statistic vary with the type of test. The test statistic formula is a fraction. The numerator is sampling error. The denominator is typically the standard error of the mean or the standard error of the proportion. The term test statistic has two meanings. One, it is the formula for the test, and two, it is the result of the null hypothesis significance test formula. Decisions about the null hypothesis are based on the significance level, the value of the test statistic, and the decision rule or p-value. What are p-values? P-values are a slippery concept that is frequently misunderstood. P-values measure the compatibility of the data with the null hypothesis. The p-value measures the probability of getting a test statistic that is as extreme or more extreme than the one just calculated. A p-value is the probability of committing a type 1 error. What the p-value does not tell us, and this is very important, p-values say nothing about the truth of the null or alternate hypotheses. This graphic shows how decisions about the null hypothesis can be made using p-values. We fail to reject the null hypothesis when the p-value is greater than the significance level, and we reject the null hypothesis when the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level. The lower the p-value, the more support for rejecting the null hypothesis. P-values and the decision to reject the null hypothesis. Two possible scenarios. The significance level is 0.05 and the p-value is 0 0.05 or less than 0 0.001. The null hypothesis is rejected in both scenarios. We would, however, have more confidence that the results are statistically significant 
when the p-value is less than 0 0.001 than when the results are equal to 0 0.05. Researchers hope for tiny p-values. Tiny p-values are often considered an important reason to think the results are important. This, however, may not be the case. Report tiny p-values like 0 0.00000006 as less than 0 0.001. In March 2016, the American Statistical Association issued an important statement on p-values and their misuse. Jessica Utz, president of the ASA, wrote, The contents of the ASA statement and the reasoning behind it are not new. Statisticians and other scientists have been writing on this topic for decades, but this is the first time that the community of statisticians, as represented by the ASA's board of directors, has issued a statement to address these issues. The ASA's board issued six principles on p-values. One, p-values can indicate how incompatible the data are with the specified statistical model. Two, p-values do not measure the probability that the studied hypothesis is true or the probability that the data were produced by random chance alone. Three, scientific conclusions and business or policy decisions should not be based only on whether a p-value passes a specific threshold. Four, proper inference requires full reporting and transparency. Five, a p-value or statistical significance does not measure the size of an effect or the importance of a result. Six, by itself, a p-value does not provide a good measure of evidence regarding a model or hypothesis. Let's turn to effect size, a topic many introductory statistics textbooks ignore. Effect size is a quantitative measure of the strength of an effect or relationship. There are a variety of effect size measures. An estimate of effect size is typically used as an input in a priori statistical power calculations. The estimated effect size is based on a review of the research literature or the judgment of the researchers. It typically is a measure considered to have practical, real-world importance. Step 6. Decide and report. The report states whether there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. The decision regarding the null hypothesis must be framed in the context of the research question. It is never sufficient to merely state whether or not the null hypothesis is rejected without describing what the decision means. The report must state the value of the test statistic and the p-value. The report should also address issues like a priori statistical power, effect size, and practical significance. What's next? In the remaining chapters of clear-sighted statistics, we will cover a variety of hypotheses tests. Tests of the mean include a variety of z-tests, t-tests, and ANOVA tests. There are also one and two sample z-tests for proportions. There is also an F-test for equality of variance. This test, as we shall see in Chapter 15, is used to determine which of the two sample t-tests for independent sample means is appropriate. There are also tests of relationships, including chi-square tests and correlation and regression tests. Except where otherwise noted. Clear-sighted statistics is licensed under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share derivatives of this work for non-commercial purposes only. Please attribute this work to Edward Volchak. You can access Clear-sighted statistics for free along with its Excel and PowerPoint files on the CUNY Commons. The URL is https forward slash forward slash cuny dot manifold app dot org forward slash projects forward slash clear dash cited dash statistics.